In this presentation, we're going to look at a bond issued or sold between interest dates, and we're going to use the effective rate of interest method for amortizing the bond. So our example here is for a five-year bond with a $100,000 face value, and it has 10 semi-annual payments of $4,500 each. And those payments are based on a 9% stated rate of interest on the bond or uh, annually, or 4.5% per period. Now, we're going to amortize the bond, and we're going to calculate its interest expense based on a market rate of 8% per year or 4% per period. Let's go down here and look at our amortization schedule. Now, the uh, normal issue date here would be for January 1st, but we delay its issue until May 1st. That's four months later. And then our first payment date here is July 1st. So we've got our interest payments shown here, and what we're going to be calculating is this interest expense for that first six-month period, and then also the amortization on it. So the first thing we have to do is we have to determine the present value here on July 1st. And how we do that, in this case, I use the um, Excel function here, where I put in the uh, market rate of interest, or 4% per semi-annual uh, period here, and I used nine uh, periods. Normally, we'd go back here and uh, determine its present value of July or January 1st using 10 periods. But by using nine periods here, I can bring and calculate the present value here on uh, July 1st. And then the payment here was for $4,500, and then the face value was for $100,000. So I, determining its present value to be $103,764. And again, that's using discounting it here using the market rate of interest of 8% per year or 4% per period. And we used nine periods here bring it back to the July 1st uh, date. Now, what we have to determine is our present value when we issue it here on May 1st, and that we'll do in our next step up above. All right, here we're going to determine the present value of the bond when it's issued here on May 1st, and also determine the interest expense for the period. So when we're dealing with bonds where we issue be are issued between interest dates, we have to break up that uh, interest payment amount. In this case, the payment was for $4,500. So the first four months represents two-thirds of the payment, or $3,000. And then the two months after the issue date here uh, represents $1,500. Now, this $3,000 amount here ahead of the issue date, we actually receive from the person who purchases that bond. And then later on, that person is reimbursed at the first uh, payment date. So what we have to do here is we have to determine the present or the future value of the bond here on July 1st, and then we discount it back here to its May 1st present value. So just using the uh, uh, this calculation here, we take the uh, present value of the bond that we uh, calculated at its first payment date on July 1st, and that was for $103,764, and then we add the payment amount here of $1,500. So we get a future value here of 105264 That's its future value. Now we discount that back here, or we calculate it using the present value function. So where we take that uh, future value amount here of 105264 and we divide it by 1 plus the interest rate to determine $103,878. Now this interest rate here is determined here uh, by allocating it uh, over this uh, six month period here. So we have a 4% market rate of interest for this uh, period and we take two six of it. So that would be represent the two months and we come up with 1.33% here. Now we could also determine this uh, present value here just using uh, an Excel function. So we put in that interest rate of 1.33 percent one period and then we know what our future value is here through this calculation and we can calculate it back determining it determining the ex using the excel function now to determine our interest expense for the period we take the present value here of uh, may 1st that we calculated and we take at times the interest rate for the period so we have the uh, future value or the present value here of 103,878 dollars times 
the 1.33% interest rate, and we come up with $1,385, the interest expense for the month or period. Okay, here we'll complete the amortization schedule for this bond. This is where we calculate the interest expense for each payment, and then we also calculate the amount that we're going to amortize that bond for each payment. And this amortization amount here reduces the uh, carrying value of the bond such that when we start here at, at $103,878 at its issue date, by the time we get down to the last payment here, the book value will be $100,000 or its maturity value on that bond. So let's look here at our first payment here on 7-1. So we had our interest payment of $4,500 to the bondholders and then we calculated our interest expense here by taking the present value at uh, May 1st of that bond, uh, 103878 times the interest uh, rate for that uh, two-month period, which is 1.33%. So we got $1,385. Then we come up to this amortization of the bond premium. Well, that's really a plug here between the interest expense that we have of $1,385 uh, debit that amount interest payable for three thousand now that's the amount that we have to pay back to the bondholders at that first payment um, portion that they paid to us originally and then we have our cash payment here a credit amount of forty five hundred dollars so the premium uh, amortization here is really the difference between the debits and the credits now just looking here at this premium amortization amount that um, you take 103878 and you subtract that amortization amount here, and then you get uh, its present value at that first payment date here of $130,764. So now to calculate our interest expense for the next period, we take the market rate of interest for that period times this beginning balance here of $103,764, and we it have an interest expense of $4,151. Now taking the uh, difference here between that interest payment of $4,500 and the interest expense, we have the amortization amount. Now this amortization amount here, of in this case $349, it gets subtracted here from the uh, bond carrying value of $103,764 and we end up with a new book value here. Now this uh, new carrying amount here gets, again, we just repeat this, process here where we take the interest uh, market interest uh, rate for that period times this uh, carrying value and then we determine our interest expense and then keep on going here just subtract that interest expense from the interest payment we come up with our new amortized amount so that's how we'd amortize uh, this bond here and we calculate its uh, present value and, and issued on May 1st and and then determine the amortization schedule with the interest expense and the amortization of this bond premium. Okay, in summary, we would determine the uh, carrying amount of the bond at the end of its first interest payment, and we also determined its carrying value when it was issued. And based on those values, we're able to determine the interest expense for that uh, two-month period from the issue date until the first payment, and also the amortization amount. And then knowing the uh, carrying value of the bond at the end of the first payment, we're able to determine the interest expense for the next period, and that would be the uh, market rate of interest for that period uh, times this carrying value and that gives us our interest expense and then subtracting this interest expense from the interest payment that we make each period we can determine the amount that we have to amortize that bond and subtracting this amortized amount from the previous carrying value we determine our new carrying value and in that way we amortize the bond down to its face value or its uh, principal amount and then we're able to also determine the interest expense that we recognize on our income statement for each of those periods.